everybody. Welcome to mini beginner's crash course to Elasticsearch and Kibana. My name is Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. So this is a series of short videos for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In episodes 19 and 20, we learned about what mapping is and how string fields are mapped in Elasticsearch. We also learned that Elasticsearch dynamically creates a mapping for you if you don't define one in advance. Now, dynamic mapping is really helpful to have, but it's not always optimal for your use case. And by defining our own mapping, we can make indexing and searching more efficient. So today, we're going to learn how to define an optimal mapping for a specific use case. And this episode builds on the material from episodes 19 and 20. So be sure to watch these episodes to get the full context. All right, so let's get organized here. I have two windows open side by side. On the left, I have the Kibana console. On the right, I have the part by repo. And this repo contains all the requests we'll be sending throughout this episode. And I've scrolled down to the mapping exercise section. Okay, so we're going to learn how to define our own mapping by doing an exercise. So imagine we're building an app for a produce warehouse and our client wants to be able to search for produce name, country of origin and description, identify top countries of origin with the most frequent purchase history, sort produce by produce type and get the summary of monthly expense. And this is a sample document that our client gave us that closely resembles a data set. Now I'm going to copy and paste this document into the console here. So we can refer to this as we determine the optimal mapping. So let's go through each feature to figure out the optimal mapping for our use case. So the first feature enables the user to search for produce name, country of origin and description. So we know that it will involve the fields name, country of origin and description. And all of these fields contain strings, which means that by default, these will get mapped twice as text and keyword. So let's see if we need both field types. Now our client wants to search on these fields, but it's unlikely that the user will send search terms that are exactly the way it's written in our documents. So the user should be able to run a search for individual terms in a non-case sensitive manner, which means that the field's name, country of origin and description should be full text searchable. Now let's say our client doesn't want to run aggregation, sorting or exact searches on the field's name and description. So for these fields, we do not need the keyword field type. So to avoid mapping these fields twice, we'll specify that we only want the text type for this field. Now at this point, we know that the field country of origin should be full text searchable, but it's unclear if we need aggregation, sorting, or exact searches to be performed in this field. So let's leave that as TBD for now. Okay, so if you look at the second feature, the user should be able to identify top countries of origin with the most frequent purchase history. So this involves the field country of origin. And for this type of request, we need to run a terms aggregations on this field, which means that we need a keyword field. And since we need to perform full text search and aggregations on this field, we'll map this field twice as text and keyword. So let's look at the third feature. Now the user should be able to sort produce by produce type. And this feature involves a field produce type, which contains a string. Now this obviously involves sorting. So we need a keyword type. And let's say the client doesn't want to run full text search for this field. So we need to map this field as keyword only. The fourth feature is that the user should be able to get the summary of monthly expense. So this feature involves the fields, date purchased, quantity, and unit price. So let's break this down. So this requires splitting data into monthly buckets, then adding up the total of each document in the bucket. So the next diagram shows you 
the April bucket and the documents of all produce purchased during April are included here. Now let's zoom in on one of these documents and look at its fields. And this is the same document as the one that I pasted here. Now you'll notice that our document doesn't have a field called total. However, we do have fields called quantity and unit price. So to get the total for each document, we need to multiply quantity by unit price, then add up the total of all documents in each bucket, and it'll yield the monthly expense. So here we have the summary of optimal mapping for the string fields that we just discussed. Now for the last feature, we need to calculate the total for each produce so it could be used to calculate the monthly expense. And after going through each feature, we know that the string field, botanical name, and the object, vendor details, are not used. And since we don't need the inverted index or the doc values of these fields, we're going to disable these fields. And that should help us save disk space and minimize the number of fields in the mapping. So now that we have thought through the optimal mapping, let's define our own. Now, there are a few rules about mapping that you need to know, and I'm going to show you how these rules work through the exercise we're about to do. So let's go over the rules real quick. Now, as you remember, you could index documents without defining mapping ahead of time. And that's because by default, Elasticsearch creates a mapping for you if it doesn't exist. Now, if you do decide to define your own mapping, you could do so at index creation. Now, remember, there's only one mapping defined per index. And once the index has been created, you could only add new fields to a mapping but we can't change the mapping of an existing field. If you must change the type of an existing field, you need to create a new index with a desired mapping, then re-index all documents into the new index. So let's see how these rules work. So first, what you need to do is to index a sample document into a test index, and this is the same document that our client provided for us. And as you can see, this is identical to the document that we examined earlier. And the sample must contain the fields that you want to define. And these fields should contain values of field types that you want. For example, if you know that the unit price will be in decimals, then the sample field should contain decimals and not an integer. Now we'll index this document by sending the following request which is post followed by name of the index you want to add this document to. And we'll name this index test underscore index, followed by a document endpoint. Now, I'm going to delete everything in the console here. And let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. It looks like the test index was successfully created and the document was indexed just fine. Now, when we're creating this index, we didn't define a mapping for it. So according to the rules, Elasticsearch should have created one for us. So let's check the mapping. And to view the mapping, let's scroll down to step two. And we're going to send this request, which is saying get mapping of the test index. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. And Elasticsearch will show you the mapping that it dynamically created. The point of doing these first two steps is to see how Elasticsearch maps this document. So if we can use the mapping as a template and make changes to it, so we don't have to write this whole thing from scratch. Now notice that mapping lists the fields in alphabetical order. Now I'm going to delete everything in the console. Then we're going to copy the mapping and paste it into the console. Then I'm going to remove the test index here along with its opening and closing brackets. Now I've included here the optimal mapping that we worked out earlier. So the first field that we're going to work on is country of origin, 
So let's scroll down to it. So for the string field country of origin, we want to set the field type to text and keyword. And as suspected, this field was typed as text and keyword by default. So we'll leave the mapping as is. And for the field's description and name, we want to set the field type to text only. So let's go to the field description. And you'll see that this has been mapped twice as text and keyword. Now we're going to leave the type as text and delete the keyword multi field here. And we're going to do the same thing for the field name. Now we also want the field produce type to be keyword only. So let's scroll down to produce type and set the type as keyword and delete the rest. Next, we know that we won't perform queries or aggregations on the field botanical name or the object vendor details. So let's go to the field botanical name. And you'll see that it's been mapped twice as text and keyword, meaning that if we were to map it this way, the inverted index and the doc values will be created for this field. Well, that's a waste since we're not using this field at all. To avoid that, we'll delete text and keyword here and add a field called enabled and set it to false. So let's do the same for vendor details object. So let's scroll down to it. So vendor details is an object that contains multiple fields. And since we're not using this object, there's no sense in creating the inverted index or doc values for multiple fields in this object. So we're going to delete everything within this object and add a parameter called enabled and set it to false. So just in case I went over that too fast, I've included the optimized mapping in the repo for your reference. Okay, so let's move on. So what we just did is we defined an optimal mapping for all of our desired features, except for the one that's marked with red X here. Now I'm saving this for the next episode, so don't worry about that for now. And next, we're going to create a new index with the optimized mapping we just created and scroll down to example. So here we have our optimized mapping and above the mapping, we add put followed by the name of the new index, which we'll name produce index. And since the optimized mapping is already in the console, I'm just going to copy and paste the top line here and paste it above. And this request will create a produce index with the optimized mapping we defined here. Now, I'm being overly picky here, but the indentation of this request looks a little off. So click on this wrench icon here and click on auto indent, and it should fix it right up for you. Okay, so let's select this request and send. All right, it looks like it worked. But just to make sure that everything has been mapped correctly, let's check the mapping of the produce index. So let's scroll down to step five and down to example. So to do this, we'll send this request get followed by produce index, then the mapping endpoint. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. Now compared to the dynamic mapping, our optimized mapping looks more simple and concise, right? And you'll see that our optimized mapping satisfy the requirements that are marked by green check marks here. So just by defining our own mapping, we prevented unnecessary inverted index and doc values from being created, which saved a lot of disk space. And the type of each field has been customized to serve specific client requests. So we also optimize the performance of Elasticsearch.
All right, so we just learned about how we could define our own mapping to optimize the performance of Elasticsearch and save disk space. This content is an excerpt from the Beginner's Crash Course to Elastic Stack Part 5. And Part 5 is a full-length workshop where I talk about what a mapping is and how you could define your own mapping to make indexing and searching more efficient. We also talk about what steps you could take when you need to make changes to an existing mapping and learn about a feature called a runtime field. And this feature allows you to add fields to existing documents without re-indexing your data. So if you prefer the full-length workshop format, check out the link on the screen. And the link is also included in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode of Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch and Kibana.